This is my baby. I have a baby. No, I haven't slept too much. This is my baby. I have my baby boy. Don't have my baby girl with me. He is a twin born at 37 weeks. His name is a secret right now. And he is just breathtaking. You're breathtaking. You're a miracle. You are a wonder and a gift. And it is the hardest time of my life, yet the most, one of the most amazing and beautiful. And uh, I don't know who I am anymore after this. It's okay, baby. Oh. Yeah. So I'm a mom. I'm mama. And I have entered the club. Hello, KB again. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And I have a special announcement to you today. I have a baby. So this is my baby. He just turned one month last week so he's um, hitting his five week mark and I just want to talk about how everything has been honestly I never thought that I would do this video so early on I'm doing my makeup today because I have to renew my license so I want to not look scrub on my <laughs> license photo so I'm just praying that he stays sleeping during this video so I'm just gonna have to be swinging a little bit but I've actually gotten a lot of things done and he's actually really really cute he's just right there swaddled in so I wanted to talk about postpartum and after the hospital the hospital was not easy probably the hardest time was just being in the hospital because they put us in a room where there's two families and both crying babies were waking up each other the first day I probably got like 30 minutes of sleep in prior to that in total with that 30 minutes I probably got like two hours before my birth before my delivery and that's really hard and I never knew why my midwife was like Melke I need to sleep now while I was waiting to dilate to nine centimeters the hardest moment of my life was the birth and just like the first couple weeks of trying to survive it wasn't easy because I had to fight through jaundice um, just like you know my baby came a month early he was a twin I lost the other baby it's just like you're grieving with all these emotions you're finding all these boundaries with family members a thousand people wanted to come and visit and I just kept saying yes 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 didn't know you know, everyone has a great intention. Everyone had gifts. They brought food. They had service. And I think it's just like I came to a point where I had like 12 groups of people coming in a week and a half. And he was cluster feeding for 10 hours straight. We had so many appointments to go to blood tests. It was just emotionally crazy. While I had all these hormones, I was trying to recover. I was bleeding. It was a four steps delivery. And I had stitches in, I was in pain. So, and we haven't established breastfeeding yet. It's okay, baby, I love you, you're so good. And just thinking about it, I guess it's so emotional. And just like both my husband and I didn't worry in getting me sleep. And I was grateful for like the help, even like from family. But I also had to get really selective with that kind of help I have and I'm like yes I want I really need someone to clean my house and they have a you know more cleaning and people are like I had so much support but at the same time I'm like oh, I was overstimulated so it's kind of like had to select what I needed now and kind of just like okay maybe you'll visit later drop-offs right now and I actually had to make a Facebook post and put it on the door just because Oh, some, there, there, there were some that were kind of like not respectful about it, which is sad. I love you, baby. It's okay. It's okay. You're doing so good. Okay, we're back. It just needs a little walk, a little motion here and there. But, um, yeah, so that was that. It was a lot. And, um... 
he has gained a lot of weight because he was jaundice. Um, he came out at about six and a half pounds, and in a week and a half. Well, actually, in a week, he reaches birth weight. Most babies gain 20 to 30 ounces. We gained seven. We were gaining 70 ounces a day. That is huge. And he was trying to make up for the loss of time with his, you know, coming out so early. And if he was a pound less at the time of his birth, he would have been in the NICU. So I think the Lord really prepared us and just like God knew exactly. And I, I, I wasn't going to quit, but I did feel and wanted to quit. But there's no quitting, of course. This is your baby. But <laughs> and something I learned from the Lord, and I think this is going to be a real video, my goodness, is that if He doesn't take you out of a circumstance, He will lead you through. And that's a Psalms 23 good kind of good father. Good father, and I don't know how I was able to survive that. And yeah, so that was that. And we were for I think two weeks, we were doing 10 hour streets of cluster feeding. I was screaming, I had never seen the worst of myself. My husband saw the worst of myself, family members saw the worst of myself. People were praying, praise the Lord. And I think just now he's still cluster feeding, but it's not like 10 hours straight. It's probably max four hours, six hours yesterday, but he would be really, really tired after that. And I'm trying to getting uh, used to things. And I think my husband and I also found like a rhythms and just like taking shifts. Um, I let him sleep at night and if I really really need nap he'd stay longer and he was able to get some parental leave which had been such a huge blessing I don't know how I would have survived even him he's like I don't know how I would have been able to go to work because in the beginning we were syringe feeding him like he, jaundice makes you fall asleep especially with newborn and we had to tickle him wake him up like do everything we were clapping we were like doing everything just to wake up and feed him so my I have um, um my lactation specialist um has been such a blessing she's just been helping me through it she's a retired lactation specialist so she had like over 29 years of experience and one thing she has told me is that your baby is a barracuda eater cute barracuda eater <laughs> and it's like this giant predator fish that would just go in your your breast and so that breastfeeding journey has been a blessing because of her, I would have quit two weeks ago. <laughs> I would have um, just, you know, you you second guess yourself a lot as a new mom, and yeah, and so just the fact that he has so much appetite now, my milk supply is above and beyond. He like throws up all the over. He throws up a lot because he eats too much from a baby who didn't eat. So that was a message to her. Shh, shh. I need to go for another walk. Shh, shh. Okay, okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah, multitasking is real. But yeah, so that's been a huge blessing. Breastfeeding was stressful because I was in the first day I was home um, to find jaundice was for him to eat a lot and for my breast supply to come in and we were doing top-ups from uh, donor's milk then we couldn't get donor's milk so we had to get formula to top up and then the first day we were back the pump broke and my milk supply went down and that was very depressing and so the next morning my dad my husband just had to go run to the store get a 500 dollar worth of breast pump. I got Mandela and all the ex extra accessories with it because it's the best what they use in the hospital and I love it honestly. It's been such a blessing and I just thought it's an investment because I'm going to have more kids and I'm going to need it and I did need it and so that's been a journey and just getting him to latch the whole entire nipple. I had to use a nipple shield in the beginning. At the beginning he wasn't even taking that and so the lactation specialist came over 
and she just taught me you gotta get a good latch, gotta wake him up, don't let him sleep in the breast and if he's cluster feeding, make him work and that probably took three days for him to improve, about a week for him to like be a pro taking the nipple and now my one thing I'm working on just like getting comfortable is the idea of feeding in public the only public feeding I've ever done was in my midwife's office <sighs> everything else ugh. Still having that, not still a little nervous. I'm not. I don't know if I would like go all out. You know, I, I need a cover, but I just like the idea of doing it in public. So I have an appointment tonight. I I don't know if I'm gonna bring him or will I go in a bottle. He was getting confused with the bottle and the and the nipple, and he stopped taking my. He didn't want my breast at one point because I was giving him so much milk in the bottle and I'd stop that and I didn't know that because it curls your tongue. So in pacifier, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. On the go it does on the car, but he really likes this motion. If there's no motion right now, he would be wide awake. And I know that babies go into deeper sleep when they're laid down and I have to do cold sleeping with him because he would just cry and cry and cry. Sometimes he'd let me put him in a bassinet. And that's been really hard because it's just like, oh, so uh, I have a queen size bed. My husband can't really be with us and also he needs some sleep. So it's just like a lot of changes at the same time. And then like, it's okay to be close to your baby. Like there's so many things and expectations, but you gotta just, you have your mother's instinct. You gotta know. And he wants to be close to me, especially coming as a preemie. And yeah, so we're in this dream together. We've taken some walks, which has been such a blessing. We went to a restaurant twice already because I was craving oysters. I haven't had for so long and I've been just gorging on sashimi. So just finding the little things to celebrate. I am excited to have my normal life back again. I like doing my makeup, taking a shower, such a luxury. And yeah, and my recovery hasn't has been slower than I thought, which has been really really i've been really sad about that because i'm like i thought it's gonna be two weeks it's like the fifth week and they're still bleeding so i've just been in faith and one thing actually that's been like really hard as well we got hit with um candida and thrush because of the f five liters of antibiotics that was given to me after my birth and yeah so that's been really hard, especially in the beginning, I freaked out. Good thing I still have my midwives right now. My last appointment is tomorrow. And yeah, it's midwives, it's good because there's a lot of like easy access and resources to them. So I was able to get the cream quickly. So we're recovering with that. And in the name of Jesus, we are healed already. And also, um, yeah, and I had like an ear infection. I did this like dumbest thing. I think you're so sleepy, sometimes you're not fully aware anymore. I was doing, using earplugs because I didn't know how to sleep with all the extra noises in the background and just him and I usually wear earplugs so in the first couple of weeks I just like was desperate for sleep, I did the earplugs. I dropped one in the toilet, I grabbed it, put alcohol and washed it, put it in my ear. Terrible. Why I don't really get eat? No sleep. You don't think straight. So that was really dumb and I, I've just been praying and I think it's a lot better now but yeah I think breastfeeding helps you with a lot of those like <laughs> which um, one time I was getting cold and he's protected because I'm breastfeeding him but I was desperate because I need to be good and healthy. So I actually pumped when I was in gorge and he wasn't waking up. And I drank my own breast milk and with less than a day I felt I was healed. Praise the Lord. Thank you for his wisdom. In a cluster, there's a lot more in between. A lot of crying, a lot of like, when is this gonna be done? This is the longest time of my life, but also very beautiful moments where my husband and I get to like be a force together and fall in love with this little human life that God gave us and honestly he's such an amazing and sweet boy and I love how outspoken he is you know no matter if people say your baby cries a lot it's like all babies cry 
and there's a lot of things too that people say that are not always good and you just have to kind of stick to your gut and I'm like this is my kind of parenting and there's stuff that people will say that is not okay but there's also really encouraging people and one of the things that um that stuck out to me is one of my mom, spiritual mamas just says you're more important I'm like what because she's like you should put a like cover on for the baby no for you because I was just like no clothes all the time like no shirt because I was like, constantly breastfeeding but I was cold and she's like you're more important and so it's like take care of myself in the midst of everything has been really good so that has been everything in the class if I forgot everything I don't know but I encourage you to watch my birth video my birth story I'm gonna link it below and be inspired and you know honestly could never have done that without my husband and especially the Lord it's been such a miracle and you know Jesus my husband they're my rock like I yeah, I, I respect to all single mothers who doesn't have that support because honestly, I don't know how I would have survived it without my husband. But the Lord is so good. And so I just bless you. And then if you're a new mom, you got this. I love and hate it when people say it's going to get better because I'm like, when does it get better? How does it get better? Are you just trying to make me feel better? Because my husband was in the room and I would like chuckle in the beginning like, Ugh. it does. Like, little by little, it just does. And that's what everyone says. But it's true. <laughs> and go for walks, because it's just really good for your mental health. Go on a walk for a, as a family. If it's cold, bundle him up. You know, you gotta live your life. And embrace the season time, because it will pass by. And I love my little guy, and he's already tripled his weight. And he was not this chubby before, but now I have a chunky baby. Alright, see you later. Say bye, Zion.